Recording started. Yep. Okay, so um, I just want to welcome uh, everybody to this first episode of Meeting with a Critic. That is myself. Um, um, I like to um, go online and uh, on Instagram and what have you and uh, give critics to artists. I try and make them positive, but sometimes I'm a bit direct, shall we say. Um, so today we've got uh, Sergi with us. Um, Sergi is an artist currently living in uh, New York, I believe. And uh, do you want to give any more information on yourself, Sergi? Yes, so hi uh, everyone. Uh, great to be here. Art thanks for thank you for invitation. Yeah, I'm actually in New York. Uh, I've been doing art for about six years. Uh, it's kind of goes in parallel with my other activities, but that's basically taking more and more of my time. Um, I am, uh, uh, my gallery said that I'm the creator of the new art style called conceptivism. And then, you know, hopefully we'll see some of the works later on, what it means. And I can explain what it means basically also to me. But yeah, great to be here. Great to, you know, to join this uh, this series. And, you know, thanks for doing this art. It's awesome. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, so I've got a few initial questions. I've actually scribbled them down here. You can't see it, but I've got a whole list of questions right, right above the screen. I thought I'd be a little bit prepared. Um, so firstly, COVID has been a, a, an awful time for everybody. It's been, I mean, where we are in the UK, it's been awful. And I think it's been awfully uh, bad in um, New York as well, where you've had a lot of cases. Uh, so how's your life been with regards to COVID and all creating during COVID times? It's been actually not not bad, you know. It's it's been you know could have been better, of course. But then it like New York was shut down. Actually, we are shut down right now as well. Mm -hmm. There was this new order that all the restaurants and all the yeah, festivities and celebrations are shut down. And we are some people even say that we cannot get together in the house more than ten people. But create creatively wise, you know, art been definitely helping to cope with it. And you know, as you know, we're sitting in you know in the office or at home. And just you know, writing. Most of my art is digital. I, I can go for a walk and actually do the you know do the uh, do the work. I could be in the office. I could be uh, at home. So it's been you know it's been great actually. I mean it's definitely uh, summer was much better. Um, in the winter it's a little bit uh, more difficult. <coughs> Excuse me, but it's been yeah it's been okay. You know it's people mm -hmm. were able to survive with a lot of you know assistance the government provides and. It's actually a lot better than uh, what it could have been. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Especially when you look at the um, the cases from the top to the bottom. I mean, I think UK and uh, America, we're doing really well, aren't we, in this league table? We're, we're right near the top, unfortunately. Right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad you've been coping all right. Um, same for me, really, and a lot of people. You know, uh, you know, a lot of people are quite lucky. We've got, um, you know. Um, sufficient money, food, and all the rest of it, and I think that's the main thing, really. Nothing to complain about, but uh, it's going to be good when it's all over. To be fair, so we can we can get on and travel and things like that, you know. So, um, first big question, really, is um, I want to know about your practice. So you said that you're a digital mainly, yes. um, and uh, you know, explain a little bit about your practice, a bit uh, about your process. So, you know, like some people say, right, uh, so the digital art, so to speak, right, is what kind of defines this category. But in reality, I totally disagree with this, right? I mean, you know, uh, you know Baroque, Rococo, uh, you know, uh, pop art, abstract expression, all these styles, they're not defined by how they are made, right? So people often use the same paint, you know, maybe they use acrylic, maybe they use oil, maybe they use some other things. But in reality, the, 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 the description of the style is based on the what the style represents, what are the distinct features of the style. So I basically I use um, a, you know, a digital. So I use digital means of, of creation of the art, but I also I have a finance background. basically. So actually everything starts as a, is a drawing. Uh, I can take a photograph, bring it into the digital editor, start playing with it, adding photographs, adding all kinds of different things uh, that I like to, you know, like to see that I can actually imagine. Um, and then I could take a, you know, end final product is actually a print, usually a print on a metallic paper or canvas. 
and then sometimes I could add hand drawing on top. But I, you know, it just only then it becomes like a unique piece. I like to produce small series, like a series of seven, series of eleven. Um, but essentially, and what I'm basically, I have a background in finance, and something in finance what's called um, um, portfolio optimization technique, right? Where you take, for example, two financial assets, and they have a defined risk profile, how much you can lose, and the five potential, you know, probabilities of how much you can gain. And then the model takes those two, let's say, or three assets, uh, and then just start, you know, crunching the numbers and produces optimal portfolio, which will give you a profile that says, you know, if you want to risk this much, this is the optimal portfolio for you to make that much. So the portfolio optimization is like a automatic statistical process that allows you to combine these two assets. And I apply the same technique in art, basically. So the art is essentially like, you know, this, uh, you know, digital device that I have becomes my like a like a you know a, 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 like a master suite uh, of an artist and I have hundreds of like hundreds of people who are helping me these are computer programs who give all kinds of possible combination of the results so they produce these results I choose which one that I like then I combine them again and again and again so it's all kind of becomes this iterative process and then in the meantime I also add my hand uh, drawing and you know some photographs so it becomes all-encompassing kind of technological process. And that's what I love about this contemporary art where, you know, in my single digital device, I can combine the tools and techniques what artists, you know, in the 15th, 16th centuries, which have to have like the whole master workshop, basically. And, you know, that's that's kind of the process. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really interesting, actually, because digital art, I'll be very honest with you, I'm going to hold my hands up and I'm going to say the, the Jury is still out for me with regards to digital digital art. In fact, when I was at, when I had an initial look on your website, I didn't have a look in detail because I wanted to keep it fresh. So when we were doing this critique and going through it, and I was going to give my opinion and get feedback from you, I didn't know it was digital. To be very honest with you, it looked it looked from a glance like it was painted. Um, so that's quite interesting that you you say it's digital. Now I I do there are I've been a bit critical about digital art. Um, over the past because I just feel as if um, for me but like I say I mean obviously things change and you know art changes um, so I'm, I'm I am open-minded to it but I think in the back of my mind I'm I'm quite uh, what's the word a little bit negative about digital art at the moment I understand so, you know it's great art that, that you mentioned that you know you looked at it and it, it's it, it looked like it was actually like painted right mm -hmm. so one of the inspirations that i have just to start work was art like a roy lichtenstein mm -hmm. and his idea was that you know you want to make a painted work of art uh with those little dots and you know like all kinds of subtones and shades that actually will produce some kind of like a shading of, of an object uh and then it would look like it was it would be painted but it would look like produced by the machines and my idea is actually to go and connect the, the connect the loop there and mm -hmm. essentially teach the computer to work as a you know as a hand hand painted uh work mm -hmm. not all of them are i guess like, are like that and some of them are very really like technological i would say and but i think it's more like it just it's it's just impossible to do in the time that we have right now the kind of complexity that the computer program uh, allows you to do um but yeah it's uh it's interesting that that, that you mentioned that i understand that i understand that you know uh, so let's say uh you want to pick a color in a painting like i used i visited a uh, rembrandt studio in amsterdam uh mm -hmm. like uh, two two years ago in the summer and Somebody like like a uh, somebody who was helping Rembrandt, you know, or uh, uh, somebody who's yeah, his helper in the in the studio would spend two years uh, learning how to mix colors and pick the right color that the master artist wanted. It just like it becomes like like becoming a dentist or becoming some kind of like a professional artisan, basically, right? Now with the digital art, maybe that's one of the reservations that you might have, right? I mean, I can pick a color right away. I see a color, I can pick it with a tool, and I know I don't have to sit and mix it up. I don't have to be, you know, this, um, you know, this artisan of, you know, like mixing up different colors, knowing what is lapis lazuli mixed with uh, this particular stone will produce this kind of color, or etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, so I'm actually much more, uh, you know, allowed much more to focus on what I want to produce, what I have an idea, 
So uh, then I think it's much more um, in a sense and in the spirit of the current, uh, you know, day of age, basically, mm -hmm. where everybody. I mean, it's interesting you mentioned Rembrandt because um, it's it's very interesting when you look at, uh, for example, if you look at a Rembrandt online, you will see a flat image. Whereas when you look at Rembrandt, if you go close to a Rembrandt's work in, in real life, you will see a very, the way that he's applied the paint is very crusty, it's very thick and it's very natural. And, it, and, and this is the thing you see, with um, digital, it's for me, this is just my thoughts, is it's, more, it's harder to show the human side, the soul of the work through digital uh, efforts. Whereas with the paint, there's a direct connection with the brush or the pen or the pencil to the canvas or the paper. Whereas with what you're doing is it's using a different skill. So it's kind of like it's try you, you, you've got to try and connect the human with your actual artwork. Otherwise, it can it can lose a lot. For example, if you look at um, uh, one good, good example for me is I mean, it, it gets a lot of praise. But you look at Hockney's digital work. I sure. mean, I think I think it's nothing nothing like some of his other work. I mean, I don't think he's I don't think he's uh, in the same league as uh, Matisse or anything like that. But I mean, obviously, a lot of people laud him to be like some, you know, the the greatest artist of our time. I don't think he is. Um, I mean, I see better artists online, to be very honest with you, than Hockney. But obviously, he's got that persona and he's built up his career and all the rest of it. And he's a superstar artist. But when I look at his um, digital work, there just seems to be a disconnect between the artist and the canvas or the artist and the print or however he's created it. Um, and, and I think that's the key with digital. And I've seen other digital artists that actually create their work on iPad um, and paint with the digital thing. But I just think there's the, the element of paint. When a painter is painting, there's like these uh, the, the kind of accidents and things like that that I don't think you quite get within digital art because it's always going to be flat. However, I can see that one behind you. Is that one of your works? That's right. Yes. You got. Yeah. I, yeah. So you have kind of you are overcoming. So I've got two screens here. You are overcoming in a way which is like creating a lot of textures and the way to do digital art it would be in a way that's going to create a great piece of digital art is going to be making textures because you can't there's that's the only way because ultimately you're working with a flat piece of sure. it's going to be flat so you're going to have to overlay colors and things like that whereas so you see, when, yeah, when you're doing it when you're doing it with paint for example if you've got a ground that's a uh, that's a certain color that some of that will show through Whereas I don't know how that works with digital. I suppose some of it could show through, couldn't it? If you just put the an overlayer on, which is light. I mean, I've messed about with Photoshop in, in my time. And I suppose maybe that is the way of doing it. But we'll look into your work further down the line. But yeah, it's very, it's very interesting. Um, so yeah, it's how, actually a couple of layers. Yeah, I guess like 33 digi digital print would be would be able to capture it. Actually, in fact, there is actually a way of doing it. And I'm experimenting with it where, you know, because when you paint, I have like each work, for example, right? Might have like 50 to 60 layers of different, you know, colors and different, you know, combinations, photographs, digital images, you know, writing, hand, mm -hmm. you know, drawing and stuff like that. So all of this and then could be transposed. There is like a special setup that you have to go through for 3D digital print. And then you'll see, I totally, I, agree. I understand what you're saying when you say that, uh, you know, when you see a, a soul of the work, right? when you see an artist's hand, you know, putting brush strokes and you can actually, it's a pleasure to see it for some people. But I guess, uh, yeah, a digital art in that sense. Do you, is, do, you know, uh, do you know, sometimes when I see work like this, I always, I, I always think to myself, I do a little painting myself and I always think to myself, God, you know what? I need to contact these people and see if they can give me one of these so that I can do some painting over the top. So I'm just at that noise, by the way, is I'm just having some work done in the house. They're just putting a new Wi-Fi in. So we'll try and ignore that. But I always think, I don't mean that in a disrespect, like I would paint over your work, but I just mean it. Some of the, some of the backgrounds and things like that. I just think I like, it's kind of, I'm just looking on my other screen, which is a better color, better resolution, but 
I can kind of see there's a lot of very interesting stuff there that is kind of hard to create maybe with a um, with the paint, you know, with the paint itself. You it have to have a so thin of a toothbrush, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, of a brush, right? And just kind of like you know, go over it and it, it is just very, very so, so what's your um what's your thought stream behind making some of these works then what i mean like for example this one behind you what are you actually what's what's the story behind it i mean is it abstract yeah that's basically abstract right but then it's also um so this story right is actually i i love philosophy and just storytelling i mean this whole book, bit about rembrandt and about a bunch of other artists is that you know i mean abstract expression is, is great right it's emotional it, you know, you can, you can, you know, see a lot of, you know, like emotions and, and but then a uh, storytelling is you have to have some kind of a substance and a context. So this too is a diptych that's called Wandering into the Unknown, right? So, um, and it's actually inspired by the Apollo 9 mission, 1969, uh, where the US, you know, put up a Apollo 9 mission and they, they flew to take photographs of the moon. Mm -hmm. So there was actually a big Cold War going on, you know, the Soviet Union and the you know, United States were like at war and for the, you know, for the exploration of the, of the, of the space. And so, um, so they actually got to the uh, moon's orbit and they were actually flowing all over, uh, around the moon taking photographs. And then one of the astronauts turned back and took the first ever photograph that was called Earth Rise, right? That's that one, basically, right? Mm -hmm. And it was very uh, poetic uh, for me, right? Where... We have to now, actually you know the earth rise you know do you know do you know the story behind the earth rise because i believe that the earth rise the actual photograph is a, a composite is not actually a picture itself apparently it's, it's a composite um of different pictures to make that actual earth rise i don't know read up about it it might sound a bit conspiratorial i'm not sure but it wasn't an actual photograph in fact i, I mean, don't believe, i mean maybe I there's believe, a but the story that kind of inspired me was that, you know, he actually turned back and said, wow, we came yeah. here to grab the moon, but in fact, the, the Earth is so beautiful. So we had to go yeah. all the way far and then to discover that we have the Earth that is as beautiful as anything else, basically. So yeah. Yeah. By, by wandering into the unknown, you know, we're trying, we are wandering into the unknown, we discover far away galaxies and stars, when we deep go deep down under the water and when we just celebrate begin every new day, like the whole life is actually wandering into the unknown. And that second one has a Times Square one, that's a building where the, you know, the New Year's Eve ball is gonna drop basically, right? So this guy, uh, it's, a, it's a diver slash astronaut or whoever it is basically, right? He's uh, celebrating the beginning of the new year. So just a celebration of, the, a celebration of life is what's inspired this, uh, this to, if, to work. if if I may, to get yeah. I'm just I've just been staring at this picture because it's kind of got they've got they've got quite a lot of um what would you say wall power I mean because the 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 colours are so garish which is not necessarily a bad thing um they do take you know they I mean they're 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 obviously sitting in your room and they're taking a you know when I'm when I'm like looking at your face I'm like wow you know it's hard to take my eyes off off them because the colours are so bright but. You know, the, the only thing that I would, not the only thing, but one that I wonder is, did you draw that figure in? Or how was that figure, how did you get that figure onto your work? The figure of the the, the diver, right. the space diver. Yeah, so the diver is drawn, basically. So right. you drew that. Right, okay. Right. That, would be, that would probably be, that would probably be, I mean, in this piece of work, I would probably... My eyes are going to it and I'm thinking maybe the drawing could be improved on that one to enhance right. the picture. Because when I looked at it, first of all, I didn't even see it. And then as you were talking, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's the di yeah, there's the diver on there. And it's not awful, but it's just it's very what's the word without being insulted? It's for me, it's it's kind of amateur. It's very, you know, it's very, um, there's no kind of, uh, you, you know, you can kind of, see, it's like, it's almost like a, a stick figure in a way. And I'm just wondering, as you're working with digital. Yes. Could you have not, could you have not photoshopped an actual person like 
flying down or for, and then actually put that into the image maybe i don't know and then you could do some artwork with regards to that but i just think the actual person could be could be improved on that particular picture that's just my initial thoughts you know when i was looking at it i was like you know it's it's kind of interesting i, I don't know about the I think it's interesting actually looking at the so I'm looking at the other screen here because I've got another screen which is better better colors. It's interesting, but it's just there's just so many there's just so many different colors. Sorry, sorry somebody's calling. Uh, there's just so many different colors. My eyes is just all over the place, you know. But it's it is good that you've got the red to counteract the green because green is a very very powerful strong color and it can kind of like take over a picture and it's very interesting actually that you've done that because in a lot of great masterworks you know the paintings for specifically there you'll see in any great work i mean some some great artists could you get away with using green i've not got a, some people think i've got a thing about green i've not green is a fine color but it's got to be the thing is with um the thing is with colors is there's got to be a nice balance and and you know when i go to the for example when i go to the national gallery in london or anywhere like that you know the great art has always got a balance and it's and it's not just where the composition lies and you know like for example in your picture here you've got your figure you've got your building and then you've got all the almost a, apocalyptic scene with all the colors and everything swirling around um You've got a lot going on there, and I'm just wondering. So for me, it would be the looking at the figure. Th this is just, you know, for my thoughts. Yeah, you, yeah. you, it, you feel free to disagree with me or say, look, you're completely wrong or what have you, because it is just my opinion. Um, but it's, it is interesting. But I think it's definitely something that you can develop. That's for so, sure. So if you if you were to follow the Right, if if it was like a like a from a you're talking about probably from a realistic perspective, like you want to say, I want the diver to be more realistic, right? It's not be... really realistic necessarily, but it's more a case of um, okay, let me give you an example. You know, Matt, do you, do you recall a painting by Matisse, you know, with the dancers? Yes. Or, or some of his cutouts and things like that. Even though they're not realistically, they're they're very artistically well done. So they're well executed. Strong colors, right? Strong, Picasso, like, yeah. Picasso as well. I mean, I know I'm using the two obvious examples. I mean, there were other artists that did that as well. But just to use those examples, they weren't necessarily realistic. Well, in many cases, weren't realistic. But their their figures were more artistically pleasing than the one that you've got there. That so that's that's just a comparison. Not right. saying it's not saying it's awful because I get it, I understand it, and I can see it. Um, I mean, it's like I don't know. I mean, like that one on the left, almost like the colours, the colours work better almost on the on the one on the on yeah the orange one. I mean, we'll go into more detail in the in a moment into you know through your website and through the Instagram. But I just so think the the most popular one that I have and. Uh, you know, I mean, I agree with you about the green. I have very little green in my works. I'm just, for some reason, I, I just feel very, very uneasy to touch that color, right? So, and if, you know, if I do, then it's always balanced with something else because like, you know, it's not a primary color, right? the red and blue and, and, you know, all the other ones, they're more like a, more easier on the eye, more acceptable on the eye. And, uh, yeah. and green is a little bit, you know, difficult and has to be, yeah, you cannot take over the image. I guess if you can think of, let's say, Mark Rosca, there is like a Mark Rosca piece in the uh, MoMA Museum of Modern Art in Europe, which has, a, I believe, like some kind of like a yellow, green, and red or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that one, you know, it's 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 even, even in in, you know, in his works as well. And, and you know, I, I do not see a lot of green, basically, overall. Yes, if no, I were, no, there isn't. Oh, I don't think there is in that work, but I, I stand to be corrected. Maybe he did works with green. I'm not sure. But yeah, you're right. You're right. The ones that I've seen, are, that there's not. Um, because I think it is a powerful colour. And it's because the eye can kind of go straight. Like my eye, when I look at that, I mean, obviously, I'm not seeing it in real life. I'm seeing it on screen, but my eye goes straight to that green and then I see the swirl of the green going around and then it moves on to other bits. It's good that the red counteracts, 
but it is interesting. I'm not, you know, it's interesting. It's, you know, it's definitely something to develop. Definitely. You know, I almost think with a lot of artists as well, that this is like, uh, you know, when I look on a lot of people's Instagrams and I've got other artists that I've got to review very shortly, uh, critique. And I, I look at some of the work and I just think, is this a snapshot of a bigger work? Do you know what I mean? It almost looks like like your orange your orange piece here on the left, and even that one there. It's almost like, is that just like a? I'm not. I know it's not, but, but I'm, what I'm saying is I'm just making a suggestion. Is it something that could be expanded into a, into a, into a bigger work? Because I know so many artists that that present a picture of X, and actually I look at it and I think, okay. So so what now? Why is it not? Why is it, you know, say, for example, either an average or good piece of work and not a great piece of work? Is it because it just stays where it is? You know, whereas sometimes like when you look at a great piece of work, like, for example, a Titian with all the figures in and things like that, or right. some of these some of these old artists. I mean, obviously, some of them will just do a straight portrait, you know, of one figure, but I think some of the great paintings are where they just they expand and they've got like a whole thing going on, you know, a whole great work going on. And I'm just wondering if your works are, are almost like not sketches, but almost like exploratory pieces of work that maybe at some point could be expanded um, so that, I, you know, I mean, how, for example, how long have you been doing this for? How long have you been making these? About six years, basically. How many? Six years. Six years, right, okay. Because a lot of, I mean, it's interesting actually, because a lot of galleries that I speak to and a lot of gallerists, they look at artists and they, they kind of, they, I think they, a lot of them, I mean, they're probably, there's going to be people out there that, uh, that say, oh, you're wrong and blah, blah, blah. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of galleries that sort of, expect artists to be have been working for like at least 10 maybe more years before they start to find their the thing that they're doing you've got an obvious style with what you're doing but no doubt in five years that's going to change quite dramatically maybe maybe but you know uh, just for to, to counter to counter basically point your uh, your uh, your thought there is that mm. so I understand when you talk about uh, like you want it to be uh, to look to look better, right? You want maybe the edges to be not as uh, not as shady, right? Or you want some kind of like a more of a like uh, even the catalogs. The catalogs have like a distinct difference between you know a particular thing that he is cutting out and the background background color that that thing is actually uh, attached to. There was actually an exhibition of Matisse like very recently in in MoMA as well. So mm -hmm. I understand that. But the whole point of the contemporary art, that's what I am doing, basically, yes. right? Art. Yeah. We, you know, if if there was an idea to 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 just talk about better, better work, I mean the work would always be better, right? The work of art would always be better. But mm -hmm. just I think contemporary art is the is the, the most important thing in the contemporary art is the of course pleasure of you know looking at the painting, but more so even the idea, right? The idea that it actually generates, the idea that it touches, that, you know, when you, for example, you know, there was like an example of, for example, right, mm -hmm. when you see a child, right, when you see a child walking on the street, you have certain perceptions about your child. When you go and let's say, uh, you know, you, you can think, okay, or, or, or a person on, on the street, but let's say you see a child who you know is, let's say, a child, a daughter of your boss, for example, right? You will have completely different perception because there's no of the ideas that surround this object that you look at, right? And the emotional, um, emotional uh, feelings that you get out from looking uh, at this object or, or, or anything that you look at is, I think, what's much more important in the contemporary art. So I believe, you know, mm -hmm. if you are, you know, going about criticizing contemporary art, you mm -hmm. should definitely brush up on things, you know, and what's going on in contemporary art. And that's completely off, completely mm -hmm. doesn't care about how it appears. I mean, it definitely, some people- Oh well, yeah, but the thing is, yeah, no, no, I understand what you're saying about contemporary art, but there's, there, the thing is with art, it's, whether it's contemporary or not, it doesn't matter what age it's made, there will always be a, almost a connection between. So 
even if you look at, for example, some of the greats, Pissarro or whoever, it doesn't matter. You go back to, you know, the really, really old stuff and there's always going to be a thread throughout. You know, you go back, you go to Suzanne and Suzanne's got, getting his thread from some of the greats and then you will be influenced as well, even though you're contemporary art, like you're saying, by... Yeah others and 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 the thing is with art, art is it's a language and this is why even so you're making something that yes is different there's still a language because ultimately it's not for aliens it's for humans true yes. so it's for our brains to say to look to for my brain to then look at your work and be like right okay that color fits because colors have got they're almost like the soul you know when you talk about the people when you talk about children and things like that let's just say people for example you know you might get 10 people in a room and they all exert different um you know like i will look at them differently and i'll be like but it's not just the way that i look at them they will be projecting energy you know they'll be projecting different energy from themselves because they're yeah. all made a different way but a lot of those things are unseen things and it's the same with colors colors have got a strong connection with the psyche with the soul and things like that so obviously you're applying them not in paint but in digital it still has the same kind of impact as titian applying his colors like for example if he applied his colors in a way that was not agreeable with not just my brain, but the viewer's brain, they wouldn't be so powerful. But that's that's what I'm trying to say. But I agree with what you're saying with regards to contemporary art. Yeah, of course, it's any art is, you know, it's do whatever, you can do whatever you want and ideas are great and all the rest of it. But remember, you're only six years in. Six years is, yes, it is a lot of time, but it's still, I would say, you're developing. So there's still, time for you to grow i mean i've met and um coached quite a few abstract artists and um one of the things that really surprises me is they launch straight into abstract and i and, I, and that for me shocks me because i'm like well aren't you going to try and draw first how would you know how to how would you know how to for example break an item up and uh, like a still life and turn not necessarily that but an abstract thought even if you don't understand how how reality is made so i for me i think i mean again there's going to be there's going to be you know people that say oh you're wrong there was this abstract artist who was brilliant and he just went straight into abstract art but for me i i think some of the best abstract artists if you look at some of their early work, including Rothko, they could draw, they could paint, they could, they could do, they could actually make, you know, make their, their early work was very, very good. But obviously then they, then they pushed it to that next level of abstraction. I understand your point, Dark, but I, you know, I, but I also, you know, I, I spoke and just recently I spoke with one of the artists also, we participated in the, in the exhibition, you know, in October and mm. he was telling me that she, you know, the, the, the fact that she went through this uh, art school in St. Petersburg, right? The, the mm. top like art school in St. Petersburg, where they learn classical art, right? Painting, you have to look in a particular way. Like, so we went together to this, uh, by the way, Hockney exhibition in uh, Morgan Library, which is like currently. And that's what I saw actually, what you, I understand what you're talking about, the digital paintings and his just regular hand paintings with, you know, with a color, with a, with a chalk or with some kind of like a you know a, a, a tool not digital mm -hmm. so she's like you can't believe how painful it is for me to get rid of the skills that i learned in this uh like you know classical school where it just prevents and kills my creativity it just it prevents me from growing so so from my perspective right i mm -hmm. i totally firmly believe that you know, I don't have a, any like art training, basically, right? I, and that's a great benefit to me. I mean, my only training is my YouTube videos and my history of art that I've been learning for about 10 years. Uh, and just meticulously, you know, understanding what's going on, what has been going on, 
what are the differences and fermentation of different styles uh, and you know features and designs. So I believe by not having my mind cluttered with like a bunch of stuff, not as much as, but only as much as I can control and as much as I need. So for me, uh, if when I look at, for example, uh, you know, Michelangelo or, Pica or Picasso or, uh, you know, anybody, old masters like Velacqua, uh -huh. it definitely, I look from just the perspective, what can I, what can I kind of adopt from their technique, but it doesn't clutter my imagination. And I think it's great that I have that. And that's a, so technically, right, the whole concept of contemporary art doesn't require that. It's in fact, it makes it obsolete and it makes it um, an obstacle from from a development because you always like be looking down from that perspective and saying, oh, you know, but maybe somebody's going to be, you know, looking such as yourself, looking at this and, you know, maybe their eyes will be painfully, you know, wishing that, you know, an, an image of Rudolf. I, I agree to some extent, yeah. The only thing that I would say is like, for example, I've mentioned your figure and, um, for example, if you were, if, for example, you did regular life drawing classes. I'm not saying, not necessarily about drawing it absolutely perfectly, but if you did life drawing classes, you would have probably have nailed a better figure there, in my opinion. Maybe. So it's I not agree. about necessarily, like, I mean, I, there's training and there's training. For example, some of these old, you know, old master type schools, they want to do the, right, you're going to have to draw a hand, you know, thousands of times or you're going to do a face, or you're going to do an eye, or what have you. So there's some, you know, ateliers that are very, you know, detailed, whereas there are other classes that are just literally life drawing, and you can turn up and literally draw the figure however you want. So there's different types of training. And also there's like, you know, there, there is just literally sketching, you know. Um, but, it, but, or, but from your perspective, it could just be a case of, um advancing your skills on the on on the digital side of things you know it could just be that kind of thing you know so it's it's constructive but you know it, it is what it is shall we go and have a little look oh by the way i wanted to ask you um how many how many hours a week do you are you practicing on your art so about uh, i do about like uh one or hour or two a day okay that's very good yeah hour or two a day so about you know uh, 10 hour maybe seven seven to ten hour a week basically. okay because one thing that I, I if i'm coaching artists one thing that i will say is you've got to try and find as much time as possible i mean i personally think 20 hours a week and it's a lot because obviously you've got to fit it in with your other stuff maybe making money and all the rest of it but for me to really push it to that next level i i always advise people 20 minimum and then obviously if you start making money through your art, then you can take it to a higher level full time, you know, 30 hours more. Um, because some of the best artists, and I, I know I'm, I keep harping back to the past, but you know, if you look back to the Renaissance, you know, these artists were breaking point, you know, these artists were at breaking point, but they were the best, they were the creme de la creme, um, and they were fantastic. Um, but I think also a lot of artists, there's there's just no way around it. It is about hard work. And I think through that hard work, some of the some of your advances will push through. You know, some of the advances where you'll be like, you'll get more of an understanding of composition, more of an understanding of colour and what colours work together better and all the rest of it. All these kind of things will that, improve yeah, because, you'll, because your brain will just start tuning into the to the language, which is which is art. Um, so yeah, that's that's the first thing. Second thing is, do you, are you selling your work at the moment? Absolutely. In fact, I'm running right now this like this Christmas and New Year's Eve specials, uh, and I've been selling actually uh, quite good. It's it's been very interesting that you know, I mean, most of them are people you know on my Facebook, on the social media. I will start now yeah. Instagram yeah. as well. But yeah, I've been participating like after the COVID in September and October. I've I've basically hit about five uh, exhibitions, and uh, it was a you know decent result, definitely. Okay, that's good. Are you with a gallery at the moment? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Okay, just doing through the through the uh, digital channels. So through cool. through Instagram and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at. 
we're going to go straight onto your Instagram feed if I can get there. Just got to go to the other screen and oh, where is it? Instagram. Uh, I just want to say uh, great. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, so we're on your Instagram. Uh, yes. Okay. So this is a re so this is a recent work. This one here. This is a recent work. Yeah. I'll be very honest with you. It, it looked a lot different, and it's probably something that kind of stood out to me. Was it kind of moved away from your style? So, yeah. so I'm experimenting, of course. Yes, but uh, but what I love, what I really like, that when you said, uh, you know, when you started our conversation, is that you found that there is a style in my work and that's what I'm trying to do. But this is actually out of that style. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not. I mean, to be honest, that, uh, you know, artists don't have to stay with that style with a particular style. I just thought it was interesting that this style was completely changed from, you know, something else you did. I think for me, I'm not. This is probably not, you know, I mean, if you got if, if say, for example, there was a scale just for me, so don't, you know, Obviously, sure. there is going to be people that like it and not like it, etc. That's life. But for me, this would be OK. So if you look on a scale of like 0 to 10, OK, 10 is masters. You know, 0, yes. 0 is, you know, 5 is, you know, is good, is good art. You know, 8 is great art. And then you've got naught to five, which is, to be honest with you, mo many artists that I see online are straddling the naught to five. Sure. Okay? Because I would say five is good, naught is is not good at all, in my opinion. Um, and I think this is this is probably to the lower end of that scale. Okay, in in my opinion, um, it's. I think it's a bit kind of you know one of these old-fashioned posters that you see yeah, in in these like the Walmart uh, uh, yeah. Valentine's Day card. That, so to that Valentine, a val actually, actually, a Valentine's card is probably not far off. And and if that was a Valentine's card for you know the teenage market or something like that, then they, they, you know that might be something that they might buy. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, but there is just one bit right so what i wanted to actually to do here uh art is that right so i mean yeah it's kind of you know happy and stuff and you know it's love but then this stylistically i wanted i was thinking about caravaggio and his playing was light so there's actually darkness all over the place so i'm trying to there's like a little bit of a, of a story behind it right so okay. it's not only yeah. perfect wonderful basically but no. then yeah I, I i agree stylistically it's it's different yeah okay um and then let's click on to this one see this is one which which i actually when i had a quick look at it i actually thought it was a painting because i didn't i didn't read all the stuff i just thought i wanted to keep it fresh so that when we had our discussion um and that's why i was wondering how i wonder how you did this in a painting but now i know it's digital it's it was interesting actually because when i first saw this and saw, saw some of your works I was wondering if you did, because some people who are painters, they will take a digital picture of something, obscure it digitally, and then copy that digital image. I see a lot of people who do kind of portraits and things like that, where you've got the, you know, these bits. Can you see my mouse? Yes. Yeah. So, so these bits here, where you've got like this kind of ripply effect, um, I think I, re I recall doing something like this on um, Photoshop. Obviously, your program's probably a lot better than Photoshop, but uh, I re recall this kind of thing where you can do this kind of texturing and things like that. It's quite interesting. Um, it looks like a kind of a, is this the sky? Yeah. OK, so there is kind of a, there is kind of a picture underneath. There is. I mean, uh, I love. I think uh, the picture underneath, I love a lot. I mean, I like it more than the than the sky and the and the and the I guess buildings in that sense, right? But the 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 the, the, the kind of the perception of the sandstorm 
just kind of, um, uh, I, I find it very tasty, uh, this particular image. Yeah, I'm not so sure about it myself. Um, okay. what, uh, what I'm just trying to put into words what I don't like about it. Um, I don't like the fact that it's got all this like smooth then texture and it's kind of, I don't know, it's just really, it confuses me, I think. But, I, but there again, you might say that's a good thing. Um, but I feel a bit confused with it because I'm almost like, what is it? What the hell is it? I mean, is that thing in the middle? Is that is that like a is that a face? There's, I don't know. Is it a head chopped off? Is is that I don't know what it is. Is it a haystack on the right hand side? But it maybe maybe that's not important. You know, maybe it's not important that I know what it is, but it's just like a bit, you know, all this embossed. It just confused. My eyes are just all over the place, you know. Yes, it's kind of for me, I would just the word that comes to mind for this one is just, I don't know, messy, I would say. Just for, for my mind, it's like, it's like, it just feels really messy. But anyway, okay. let's, move, let's move on. But I, as I say, it's my opinion. It's, sometimes it is quite, it's actually, I have to say, it's actually a lot easier to write these things down rather than speak face to face because you can actually see, see me saying it. So uh -huh. it is... Right, let's have a look at some of these. So this is some of your pictures out and about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Che Guevara and Marx. In a strip club, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at this one here. So this one pandemic related, of course. Uh, right, so Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, you know, healing the New York City from the pandemic. Um, so a lot of my art is uh, Bible related, a lot of inspired by Bible, more mm. so by the, you know, by the Old Testament, like so the Torah and, and you know, and the uh, the Book of Prophets, but then also uh, the, the New Testament. So uh, I felt just, I felt kind of compelled to, to do this kind of uh, an image. So what do you think? That was my fault. I've just started nope. the recording. Um, that was my fault because um, the Wi-Fi guy, he cut the old connection off and then he was putting the new connection on. So um, I'm going to go straight back into where we left off. And that is onto your page. OK, and I was just... I mean, I was just I was just scrolling through, actually, and and I hope I wasn't being too negative because, you know, no. like I say, it is my opinion. And it, and it's just some of the things I do say are quite sometimes quite cutting, like, for example. But I, I mean, I do look at this one here, you know, the one with Jesus and the doves. And I think I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a great piece of art, but it is something that you could potentially use as like some kind of. It would make a really good gift card. It really would. And that's not a negative thing because, let's face it, we all buy gift cards. Um, yes. The other thing I was going to say is you're obviously enjoying it. And that's something that I sometimes forget to recognise. When I'm talking about art and I'm talking about, oh, what I think is good and what I think is not good, is actually, does that even matter at, at this stage? You're obviously exploring your practice. Yeah. And and you're obviously enjoying what you do, and that is very important. Yeah, absolutely, Art. Yeah, but I'm enjoying it. But I'm also, um, you know, I'm trying to uh, create a stylistically different. Um, like, I mean, it's it's a, it's a new art style which I named conceptivism, basically, right? And yeah. stylistically, a lot of people, a lot of, I mean, I've had gallery presentation before, and I just kind of cut off the last year. I've been on my own. And uh, it's been uh, interesting that they teach, they see stylistically a very unified uh, art style, which is great. And, you know, I mean, there are different stories that I explore. I'm telling stories and I'm uh, trying to, you know, explore the ideas that I get. I, I read a lot, you know, I research a lot. But yeah, the visual language is uh, my idea is to make it, uh, to make it, um, I mean, I'm not consciously like thinking about it. It's just like it turns out yeah. that. 
Yes, yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it wouldn't, it would be a mistake as an artist to think, right, I'm going to try and make something that other people like. Ultimately, it's got to be about what you like to start with and then grow it. Understand the composition, understand the colours, understand the, you know, the scale of the work you need to make. And obviously, have your, be your own best critic. You know, there are a lot of artists and I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, but not surprised because I met, I meet so many of, so many artists and they actually don't know how to critique their work. Now, the reason why I started, I should have probably said at the beginning, but the reason why I started this thing and started critiquing people's work is because I had a friend um, and he made a lot of very, he's a good artist now, I won't mention him because I don't want to embarrass him, but he made a lot of very, very bad work. But he was only, he was only at that point about five years in to taking art seriously. So he wasn't at the stage, to be very honest with you, where he should have been taking art into galleries anyway, in my opinion. Well, in his opinion now as well. But I stood there and I watched him. I used to go around to some of the galleries. He'd, he'd have like these little photos of the work. And, and it, we both laugh about it now, but he would take them into galleries and, um, and the galleries would, um, they would laugh, you know, but not in his face, but they would actually, hold on, let me just take this. <clears throat> they, they would, I would actually observe them. So he would go in, he would show them the pictures, they would look at the pictures, and as he's walking out the door, I could see through the window <laughs> the galleries laughing. <laughs> and it was such a dilemma for me because I'm like thinking, okay, so I could see these people laughing. Am I going to tell my good friend that they're laughing at his work or laughing at him or both? No. So I, I was, I was guilty as well. I mean, like that. That's why now I don't think twice about saying to somebody, "Look, you're not there yet." Not necessarily saying that about you, but I'm just saying that I don't think twice about telling artists look, you're not there yet. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want people to be like, you know, I see so many artists that are like plugging their work out there. Please buy my work. Please buy my work or go into galleries and what have you. And to be honest, it's not there yet. They're just in, they're in discovery mode. You know, they're, they're, they're still got, they've still got years to discover how to create great works and they're not there and not being funny. Gallerists, they know their work, whether People like gallerists or galleries or not. Yes, of course, they're going to try and sell your work, but they they know what great work is. They know what really good work is. OK, admittedly, there are some galleries. I would say very subject. I mean, like, you know, I, my favorite area, this in New York is Chelsea, right? You can just look, look through, you know, maybe like eight or seven blocks and just like look at maybe 20, like 30 best galleries, including the, the Lee Song Gallery, you know, the uh, uh, the Gagosian and like a bunch yeah. of other smaller scale ones. Yeah. And a lot of them, people just, you know, you can see a work of art on the wall that just, you know, uh, some, you know, stylistically or artif you know, like, uh, artistically, like not pleasing or, or like completely different and, you know, which a lot of questions could be raised. But then, you know, they, they, they follow in a particular art style, particular situation. And just about your friend, I wanted to also offer you an, an cool story. So, you know, Salvador Dali, right, was a big uh, regular uh, in New York. I mean, his career, his peak of his career probably turned turned into New York, uh, in New York. And he, mm -hmm. he was this, you know, he was like a regular uh, at this hotel on 55th uh, and and, um, and and 5th Avenue. Uh, I forgot the name of the hotel, actually. But so, you know, he would rent a big uh, suite and he would have his parties there. He would invite all his friends and art critics and gallerists. And he would have, like, models, you know, like, uh, uh, poured with, like, honey and then just would put them out, like, in the, in the feathers and all kinds of crazy stuff. And this guy, uh, um, 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 American artist um, uh, Andy Warhol, right? He was like a young uh, up-and-coming artist then. So he wanted to meet him. So he actually took his painting and brought him to Salvador Dali and gave him as a gift in that hotel. And Salvador Dali, so it was an awful, awful piece of art. He put it, it was actually one of his Maryland's basically, right? He mm -hmm. put, he threw it on the floor and he actually 
peace on it. And uh, guess what? You know, uh, M M uh, Marilyn Monroe is number three of the most important works of art of the 20th century, according to 1999. Well, I've, got, I've got to interject there because Andy Warhol is probably one of my least favorite artists of all time. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. But then because his happened. work was more for me, his work was more illustration and more of a uh, factory. It was you know, it reminds me a lot of this um, figure that they call Banksy, which is actually, a, in, in my view, it's it's just a big con. Um, it's uh, it looks like, you know, back in the day, I used to have a job that um, where which took me inside marketing agencies, um, advertising agencies, and they were basically like, you know, selling to businesses. And I'm convinced that the Banksy name is part is is not one person it's, it's part it's a big organization whereby they actually create the they create the ideas they have somebody that then does the artwork does the stenciling and then they go out and then they get somebody to spray it it's not it's, it's not for me it's not art it's just a bit of fun, but that it pleases the masses. But I'm not interested in what pleases the masses. Warhol is of the same ilk, in my opinion. Um, he did create some all right stuff, but I know there was a story about Rothko crossing the road. You know, Rothko was a proper artist, in my opinion, like not a proper artist, a a good, a great artist. And um, he didn't really want to be associated with Warhol because Warhol was he was just a he was just a player, you know. He was like, you know, his tin of soup. That's what Warhol is. He's just a tin of soup, you know. But um, that's my opinion. Some people like him. He sells for a lot of money. But when I see any Warhols in the Tate Modern or anything like that in London, I just I take a big sigh, you know. It's just a bit flat for me and his Elvises and what have you. It was, you know, it was interesting, but it, it looks kind of like it looks like advertising you know so so to you when you critique your art right to you like this commercial success of uh of andy warhol right <clears throat> it's phenomenal commercial success i mean mm -hmm. you know on, on top of like uh of like picasso and uh and matisse uh his work is named number top five of the most important works of the 20th century by i've been mean, for about hundred of world-renowned art critics of the 1999 i believe or 1991 I, I forgot the year when they got together mm. and decided yeah. it was the most yeah. important. i'm sure you know they pay uh, gag and hans probably paid them off because two of those works are in actually museum of modern art mm. right so the big uh, ladies of Dominion by picasso and matisse's red studio but but nonetheless you know let's assume there is some credibility to that kind of a distinction his work number three uh, uh marilyn monroe I mean, it's all about the ideas. I mean, why, how would you describe this commercial success? And uh, do you sense that or do you perceive that the commercial success is not as important? I, uh, for, well, for me personally, I mean, I might be different to I, I'm probably diff. I'm sure I've got a different opinion to a lot of, you know, critics out there um, and artists and, and whoever. So this is just like I keep saying, it's just my opinion on on various things. But money really doesn't come into it at all for me. I don't even think about the money. You know, just, when okay. I see when I see some great works that are selling for like millions and millions, I just think I just think it's silly, really. I mean, I, I mean, great works should be in museums as simple as that for all the people to enjoy. I don't think artworks, good, great artworks should be in private collections. But obviously private collectors, you know, they'll have different views on that. But I think private collectors, they should be collecting new artists rather than, you know, taking museum, potential museum works and sticking it on their boat, you know, or something like that. So money is really not anything to do with it. I mean, I look at, for example, I look at people like Jeff Koons and things like that. And I just I don't like anything like that, to be honest, I don't. You know, it, there's an idea. He's t he's kind of following on from the Warhol thing. I'm not really interested in pop art. I'm not really interested in illustration. I'm not really interested in anything that's like kitsch or twee or anything like that. I am pro I am interested in proper art, and I and I can see that what you're doing is you are trying to make proper art. You know, it's it's inventive, it's fresh, it's it is new. Um, I don't think it's there yet. 
but at the end of the day, like you say, you're only six years in. Six years, you're like a, you know, for an artist, that's very, that's very young. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not saying you are very young. I'm saying that art is very young still. So you've got so far to go. Uh, I would probably just, I mean, my advice to you would just be like, increase the time you're working on it, if you can. Obviously, you know, you. I'm sure you've got other things going on in your life that you've got to try and earn money and all the rest of it. But I think try and spend more time on it. I think I can see on your Instagram, actually, that you do you do go out looking at other art, don't you? Quite I do a lot, actually. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. I go to, you know, New York is like, um, yeah. the, you know, the self-fulfilled, but, you know, the capital of the art world, right? Yeah. So there's a lot. I go to all the Armory Art New York, New York art, you know, affordable art. There's a bunch of art fairies that are going on every year and i'm participating like in all of them and i'm going you know i'm going and visiting them it's it's yeah. great i mean one thing that i've that the beneficial thing that i started as an artist i'm not selling like a lot you know although mm -hmm. i'm getting like, to, 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 to good uh, levels but mm -hmm. the social life uh art it's just unbelievable it's just mm -hmm. you know there's so many gatherings and you know, happenings that you're invited to and you know there's lots of this creative people going on and that they, they love to visit it's just a particular breed of people mm -hmm. i'm just enjoying it a lot yeah mm -hmm. interesting i'm just looking at this one can you see this one that i'm looking at, at the moment the yeah. Raphael? it's That's interesting when you when you look at his composition obviously it's a you know a work of near perfection you know where he's how he's painted the figures and everything like that but i but it's also interesting the way that the color schemes are as well and there and it's all everything fits can you see that the way that your eyes move around the painting and it's kind of smooth and i'm not necessarily saying that you've got to block things out in specific colors but <clears throat> if you look the center the center image you've got you know you've got the madonna with the baby You've yes. got a wearing a she's wearing a blue dress. She's got a kind of a, I can't see it exactly clearly, but it, she's got kind of like a goldish or thing on her head. The baby's then then your eyes move towards there's a slightly bit of pink on her upper and then you move towards her, her foot. So your eyes are moving all around the picture and you move towards her foot and then you can see some red and then the off plays with the green that's on the right hand side. And it's just like the space in the picture as well, even though there's like six figures in that picture or more, maybe six, I think it's six figures. You, you know, the composition is just well, very well thought out. Do you know what I mean? I agree. And, but you know, apply, yeah. and the more that you see, the more that obviously, obviously you're spending a lot of time in art galleries and museums, the more that you do that, the more that your your person you're gonna you're gonna start it's like it's like learning a different language you know and it, and the more that you do that the more that you're gonna take that back into your work and the more it's gonna soak in and you're gonna start thinking more about oh that, does that look right does that and it's and it's not about stopping your you know your thirst for color but it's more a case of trying to understand does that look right does it look right to your brain? And that's where your internal criticism will start to increase. And you'll start to, older works, you'll start to look at your older works and you'll say, actually, some of my older works wasn't that great, but now I'm moving into new territory. Yeah? Yes. That, that's what. That's the kind of thing that I'm kind of getting at, you know? But you have got some, I mean, looking at this one here, you have got some kind of, understanding it's like that's not that's not too bad the color composition on that because it's kind of quite and i'm not saying it's a nice balance because you've got blue on this side and blue on that side it's just the the balance of the color is is better in this one you know okay. my eye even though there's a lot going on you've got quite uh what we call it is a nice palette you know you've got kind of a it's not such a oh even though you've got a lot of colour, it reminds me a little bit of how um, Matisse, you, you, you've, you've seen Matisse work, yeah? Yeah, uh, Matisse is actually one of my inspirations. This, uh, is this he? Right, okay, that's oh, interesting. Yeah. But that's interesting. So obviously some of it's starting to seep through. You know, you can see the blue, the strong blues and yellows, and then you've got almost like the, the sort of pinks that s sometimes Picasso used in some of his work. Interesting, but and this is how this is how things come through. And that one's quite interesting. You see, you've got some work that I don't. 
<clears throat> I don't like I said, I don't think you I don't think you're you're there yet, but I do think you've got some work that shows some promise. For example, this one. See, my eyes are drawn to this one because you know, one of my earliest art memories was um stained glass windows, and it, it sounds like this it sounds it seems to me that this kind of is influenced yeah. by a stained glass window, maybe, and, and you've got oh, quite a lot of your interests are kind of religious and things like that, and that that kind of that could be developed. You know, yeah, in fact, you know, there's this uh, a church at Pocahontico Hills in New York, uh, in Westchester, right? So they actually the Rockefellers invited Mati um, um, uh, Sagal and Matisse mm -hmm. to decorate the church, and this is one of the work that I've done after visiting mm -hmm. the church. Yeah, so we're actually like so it was like a world class contemporary art, you know, by Matisse and Sagal there. So and this is uh, original, I, this piece of work, is it? Is this completely original? No, it's coming. Of course, yeah, it's original. It's not like okay. they have here. Like, uh, so Chagall has about 12 of the apostles. There are yeah. 12 windows. And then Matisse has one of the yeah. pieces of the of the like the rose. Uh, I, have you know. to say, I have to say this would make maybe there's a bit too much black in there, but this would make the basis of this would make a very nice church uh, stained glass window. Yeah, yeah, I guess I, I I think it would. I think it would. And I, I've seen a lot. I I mean, every time I go in a church, I always look at the windows and uh, and I'm, um, you know, it's just amazing to see, you know, especially when it's a, like, a, you know, have you ever been into a church when it's like a cloudy? I mean, I'm not not massively religious. I'm more spiritual. But, you know, I've been in been many times I've been into a church when it's kind of a cloudy and sunny day, you know, where yes. the clouds are going through. And, you know, this kind of window here would be amazing if, if, you know, suddenly the clouds move and then the sun comes in and then this would just this would just light up. Um, just going through having another flick through some of your work. So you're looking. So you you are looking in detail, obviously. About some of the great artists of our time. Yeah. Oh, well, of of you know, Rugal, our Elder, time. Art, art Yeah. Time. Awesome. Yeah, it, I mean, it's some fantastic detail and it's just masterpiece, isn't it? It really Absolutely. is. But again, yeah. in that work, you know, he's not just his composition, but also his palette is just outstanding. And then you've got other work that I'm just going to stop on things that I find interesting. In fact, if I scroll up, there was something that I thought initially was a painting. Um, and I thought that was quite interesting. This one here. I thought that one's quite interesting. It reminds me a little bit of a it's kind of like. Um, different from a lot of your other stuff, but it's kind of, it reminds me of something that would look really good as a woodcut. You know, a woodcut print. Yes, uh huh. I don't know yeah. if you. I don't know. Maybe you've been influenced slightly by woodcuts yeah, or something would, like that. Yeah, yeah. But it does look like it does look like the kind of things that you could you could turn into like literally cutting out the what's names, cutting out these, cutting out the figure. You've even got the lines moving in the kind of, you know, like if you see masterpiece woodcuts, like especially German German expressionist woodcuts, they they move their lines kind of like through the wood and like just straight lines. It's really. It's really interesting to to observe. Yeah, like that. Well, maybe even I mean Durer, maybe not, but Durer like much earlier. But yeah, I understand what you're saying. I understand. Yeah, I, I did, and it's interesting. It's it, maybe it's interesting as well that ones I the ones that I quite like are the ones that look more like actual paintings. So I mean, I, that's interesting, but that might be a personal bias. I'm not sure. Let me just have a scroll through, see what else you've got. So you've got like the this eye here. You've got various other interesting kind of color. Is this one whole painting? Is so this, this one whole work? Not painting, sorry. Is this one whole work? Yeah. Okay. So that's quite that's kind of interesting, and it's got kind of a nice, you know, genesis according to the Big Bang. You can see that. That's interesting. Um, let's have a look. I'm not. I'm not really keen on these ones. They look a bit. I don't know why. I think it's because they look a bit futuristic. You know, like you know, like one of these. Um, you know, like one of these games that you get on the on um, PS4 or something. Yes, you're right. It's kind of like it's kind of like really futuristic. But at the end of the day, you're exploring, aren't you? 
and this is what it's all about you are exploring different ideas and things Let's see what else you've got anything that i can pick up on but you know it you know what it it reminds me when i'm looking through your your profile it just reminds me of somebody that's enjoying making enjoying being part of the creative process um and i think that if you if you can keep that up and continue it like that one's quite interesting what's this one so this is basically like i visited i visited through europe uh, last summer and it's just kind of a combination of just a vienna right so vienna was just phenomenal uh, phenomenal city that i visited and you know yeah. the museums were there and just overall the life and i, I loved the vienna first time visit so I kind of put like all together like a kaleidoscope of like everything that I loved about it. And, you know, so that's kind of what it turned out to be. Yeah, that's that's quite interesting. That one is it almost looks like a, I mean, how you've described it is exactly what it almost is. It's almost like a kind of a montage, isn't it? You know, yeah. like I, I mean, when you look at it, it's kind of I mean, obviously I can't see it in. I've only got it on a screen, but it almost looks like you've stuck bits on it, you know, bits of paper and paint and you've created yeah, it's not bad, that one. It's not bad. Um, let's have a look, see what else you've got here. Oh, and there's a picture of you with uh, the great Monet, right? Monet, yeah, Monet. Uh, yeah, the, uh, one of his latest work. I think he's done like three or four of these. Wow. And imagine, imagine art, right? So he spent 56 layers of paint on this thing, right? Yeah. And it took him three years to paint. Yes, How much yes. pain did he waste? I'm, I'm yeah, sure. I know, but you know what? He he wasn't even even when he handed it in. I think he was getting older and he was getting maybe ill yeah. or something like that. And he wasn't even convinced that he'd finished it. So that just, I think, I think by that point in his career, he's just reached such a uh, perfection that he you could all he could probably always touch it up here and there. And it's because it's such a big work. He probably could have yeah. kept on going for 10 years, you know, so yeah, it's but, incredible. But it's incredible. And the, one of the cool <laughs> things, you know, during the armory party, the armory party every February, like first to the seventh, they do this armory show mm. and they do this party at the MoMA and they open up MoMA completely for the visitors. It's just unbelievable. There's very few people. You have this MoMA becomes this one super high end techno club you know and with like a world-class art available you know for your disposal it's yeah it's believable yeah there's some uh, there's definitely some interesting beginnings going on in a lot of your work I, i'm like a, can you see me hovering over this one yes uh-huh this i'm not really overly keen because i don't for me this is the sort of thing that i was talking about how some people do that yeah. they get an, they get an image they do this and then True. they paint it and then they paint it. But I, I but I yeah. think the more creative stuff is kind of like this one here is you're moving towards some kind of style. I'm not keen on this. It's a bit kitsch. It's a bit kind of, kitsch, you know, yeah. but like I say, if you, you know, if, if you wanted to, if you wanted to sort of develop it as like, you know, Christmas cards or something like not Christmas cards, like Valentine or something like that, that's that's something else that you could explore um but i for me i'm like looking at you know art you know yes absolutely and things that i'm and things that i'm thinking where you can kind of explore and further your practice but you've got you've got so many ideas um that i think i think it's just a case of keep on with it you know keep on with it keep on expanding keep on checking out the masters i mean for me um, even though I do check out a lot of, um, you know, new art, contemporary art, I always go back to the masters because the masters is they're the ones that have have been there, they've made it, they've got they're the they're the they're the ones they're the referral documents, you know, yes. and they're the ones you, you'll really get the most out of. Whereas I think contemporaries, yeah, there are some good contemporary artists out there, but. I just think they're all going back to the the masters, you know, on in whatever medium. I'm just scrolling through some of these others. You've got a lot of you've done a lot of work. How long does one of these pieces take? To, how long does one of these pieces take you to do? So um, depending on the situation, but you know, abstract work usually takes like a couple of days or a week. Um, uh, like more detailed one, um, you know, where there's actually some composition and some situation where I apply 
try to, you know, present, you know, could take like some time took like, you know, months and, you know, I would, I would start for a little bit. I would come back to it. I would start again. I would, you know, like just like more and more kind of, kind of slowly build up. I have some works that I've been working on for about, you know, five, six months now, maybe a year. And I still not happy with that. You know, I'm just kind of yeah. working, but they are ten they tend to be less of a abstract works, but more of a, you know, just uh, some kind of a composition. Yeah. Yeah. Well, kind of story. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to wrap this up, but it's been really interesting for me because it's the first one. And I think, um, you know, we've been honest about, you know, you've been honest about your work. I've been honest about what I think about your work. So thanks for letting me to, you know, go through it. And, you know, because I suppose it is, it's put it, it's, it's part of you, isn't it, at the end of the day? And I am respectful to that. And also respectful the fact that, you know, you are six years. I mean, if you put it this way, if you were like 20 years in and creating this, I'd probably be like, I would, my advice would be just continue and enjoy it. However, because you're six years in and still growing, and also you could probably scale it up with regards to time and things like that, that I think probably you're gonna you're gonna change you're gonna change a lot, you know. And the more that you soak up you more the more that you soak up other work, even though it might not be digital. I mean, there might be other digital artists that you might want to take not obviously steal their ideas but you might want to get ideas off them and, and things like that you know but That's what you see the thing is if you were a painter i would probably say to you things like i mean i mean it, it i mean what are your drawing skills like your drawing skills i mean i've taken some classes you know some before not a particular school art school but i've taken some class i've been even taking classes recently uh, and, you know, but I just figured that it's just not, you know, what's interesting, what you told me, what I think was great uh, benefit I got from our conversation today, right, is that from your perspective, a perspective of an art critic um, who sees a lot of the experimentation that I do, right, and you, you said like, okay, the stylistically, right, so there's a style. Right. So, I mean, to me, it's been very, very important that that, you know, I mean, not that I, I want to I aim to do that. I'm just going all over the place. But I also try to come up with with a story which, you know, which would actually, you know, create a new style that I want to I want to. And I think I did do that. So what I'm going to pay yeah, focus more is on that particular style. Right. So sometimes, you know, you walk around even that photo, that picture of like a Valentine's Day walmart card right i enjoyed creating it i enjoyed exactly you know, and this is it and this is where i, I have to sometimes write rein it in because art ultimately is about the doing and it's not all the time about being a great piece of art it, it's also about doing something that the artist enjoys but obviously i don't i i just want to make sure that nobody experiences that same thing that my friend experienced you know, so that so we have the discussion now. It okay. might say it might save artists a lot of embarrassment, and it might a lot of artists. As I say, you know, when you're very close to a piece of work, you're looking at it. You're liking the colours. You're liking the what the pattern that you've made and things, but you're not realizing whether not you, but just artists generally, just maybe are not realizing is this good or isn't it good. You know, and that can be the same for a writer, a musician, you know, when or even a singer. You know, I mean, I, I used to know a lot of singers that were quite awful, but they used to think they were really good. And that's quite an interesting thing as well. And I'm sure I do things, you know, that I think are really good where they're not, you know, whereas to be honest, my kids will just tell me straight anyway. You know, <laughs> they'll just tell me <laughs> that's absolutely awful. But but. I think what it, what I'm trying to say is it's about um, teaching yourself as an artist to be more critical of your own work. So when you produce something, you know, it might be a case of looking at it. Yeah, I mean, and just, you know, looking at it for quite a long time is, is it good? And even something which is a useful exercise is you could even take it in, take it into a museum and literally your favorite work, not necessarily, you know, something that is relatable and take it and just hold it next to. That's a great idea. Yeah. 
some really great work because you know what it's, it's interesting but but what what i've found from what some people have told me is you might start off and think oh god the wall the work on the wall or in the museum is fantastic i'm never going to get there but by year in year out of continued working you know you might start pushing it nearer and nearer you know and the reason why i asked about you know what your drawing standards are is because i do always think when i see works that are computer generated or as in obviously you're generating them but digital i do i do see the potential of other images on that piece of work that are actually done by the actual physical hand pencil paint or other or even sticking objects on you might make some further dimensions into your work yeah definitely. possibly but it might not be the way that you want to go but you know it's been it's been a very useful conversation thanks for sharing your work with us thank and, you very much um, thank you for having and i'll me. keep an eye and we'll keep in touch anyway and um and we'll keep in we'll we'll keep in touch and i'll keep an eye on your hopeful developments great absolutely and i look forward to hearing some more of your stories and uh more of your uh, visits with the artist yeah. you know well definitely you. yeah there's going to be more of this this is number one so um there's going to be more of this and it, and yeah it's going to be quite interesting i think as to, uh, you know as time goes on and hopefully they can be used as a bit of a resource as well for artists to sort of look at it i'm i'm no genius art critic I don't think there are any, to be honest. It's just the fact right. that I'm swallowing up as much art that I can, and sure. I can kind of, I'm standing outside, so I'm not one of your, uh, obviously we are friends now, but I'm not one of your close family or friends sure. that's obviously going to say, Sergi, you're brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. And they all say that. They all say that you're brilliant. Ah, they don't, but they that's just why they're friends and family, though. Whereas... I'm it's, trying to be I'm I'm trying to be a friend that basically just cuts through that and just says, right, let's get to the you know, I'm not you know, for example, uh, I'm not keen on that figure or there's something else that I think you could improve or explore or something like that. And then, I, you know, my ultimate hope is further down the line, 10 years time from, you know, five years time from now, the work's going to be taking a brand new level, but keep enjoying it. That's the main thing. Yeah, absolutely. Same to you. And, and I have also a suggestion for you. I would say that, you know, like I would have uh, because, you know, what you what you started doing is awesome. It's unbelievable. I think uh, it's a great because, you know, even that, you know, you mentioned that story about your friend and they laugh uh, about him and about his art. Right. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they laugh is just it's still a reaction. It's still an emotional yes. reaction. Yes. How many stories were there where somebody laughed at somebody and then that something became some great great thing right so you yeah. never know i mean that reaction the attention is the most precious thing right this yeah. point the, the data point of your attention of your you know you're spending time with me right now it's it's unbelievable and i'm grateful for that so even the critique i i'm welcoming i'm taking it and it's just awesome i think so but but you might consider you know putting maybe like a background or something like that that's kind of a you know like a brandish so to speak uh yes, yeah and, well and rather than rather sorry. than what's behind me a tv and a door <laughs> <laughs> and then it dressing yeah. up like, like but, a book. but you know that that's a good point maybe i'll do that further down the line but i didn't want to i didn't want anybody to think i'm kind of like professional you know i just wanted it like it is i'm amateur and i'm just spilling out my thoughts that's hey. it really you know, you are a professional. I'm sure for me. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think I'm a professional artist and, you know, so uh, your attention and your, I mean, it's, it's it definitely, it, you know, ultimately, what is the point of the art criticism, right? It's just to bring more attention to the, to the, to the contemporary world. I mean, art has a lot of uh, tasks and a lot of, you know, reasons to exist. You know, there's like a whole bunch of them. And, you know, your uh, attention to this, uh, to, to, to the artists and, you know, up and coming or established is, you know, helping to make the world a better place, make the people cope with, you know, maybe with suffering and, you know, make the world more beautiful, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of applications to this kind of a show. Well, this, this is it. I mean, I mean, if everybody was painting, there'd be no war, would there? Yeah. yeah or you know or making digital art or whatever ceramics whatever they want to do if everybody was just being creative 
you know, it, the world would be a better place. So that's why I would never ever say to anybody, stop. I would, but if they come to me and ask my opinion, obviously I'll share it. Yeah. So, uh -huh. but thank you very much. Right. So what we'll Hi. do is we'll, we'll end this and I will share it on YouTube. And also I will share it on the Instagram, some of it, and obviously encourage people to follow you and uh, check your progress. Sounds great. Yeah. Awesome. So, Look forward to seeing it. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you.